Welcome to another edition of the Free American Hour. I'm your host, I'm Clay Douglas, and my guest today is J.B. Campbell. And uh, that is J.B. Campbell, extremismonline.com. Hello, J.B., how are you? Morning, Clay. Very well, thank you. How's it been for you since the last time you were on my show? Any response from the shows? Anything heating up? Any attacks on you? What's going on? Oh no, no, I'm <coughs> I'm fine. We gave a uh, we had a a big uh, anti-gun control meeting here in our county the other night. That I organized and I made the uh, keynote address for it. I don't know if I sent that to you. Like to have that? Yeah, uh, you have it. I would like to have it. I don't know if I've got it yet. I haven't seen that. <laughs> The, uh, I can uh, give you the address. It's quite uh, it's quite good. The sheriff and his and the deputy came to it. I didn't ask them to come, but they came, and uh, it uh, it angered him. He he eventually stood up and denounced me, and then walked out. So it was uh, pretty provocative, but it's something that has to be said. The uh, I I just updated my website. And uh, some fairly interesting things are, are, are coming out. The uh, CTC, Combating Terrorism Center, that's at West Point. They uh, put out a report that uh, says anti-federalists who oppose a new world order as well as members of several other far right wing activist groups are potentially terrorist threats. West Point uh, U.S. Military Academy trains, education, and prepares uh, officers for their service is was established following the events at 9-11-2001 because of the belief that strong initiative was needed to prepare cadets for the new environments they would be headed into upon graduating the post-9-11 and the post-9-11 er era. The CTC provides a unique terrorism-based education and since its creation the program has been headed uh, uh, or be headed upon graduating. Uh, uh, let's see. I'm sorry here. I'm sorry here. A new report from the CTC, however, says those who oppose a new world order are potentially violent terrorists. One of these, uh, one of the groups uh, this report warns of is a modern anti-federalist uh, group, which the order says contains believe people who believe the American political system has been hijacked by external forces interested in promoting a new world order, an idea that's even been confirmed by David Rockefeller in his book memoirs and George uh, H. W. Bush in various speeches. I, I have said that 9-11 uh, and the war on terror was a war against anybody anywhere in the world that didn't want to go along with one world government, so I guess I'm a potential terrorist and that means uh, that anyone suspected of terrorism can now be De in indefinitely detained without a trial. 
tell me, JB, isn't this exactly what you've been telling people it was going to come to for the last 20 years? Yeah, it's true, Clay. Absolutely true. I was myself classified as a terrorist in uh, well, 1990. That's been, what, uh, 23 years now. I, because of starting the militia movement. Uh, and the way that came about, the way I learned about it was that I had to go on a speaking tour around the country in 1990. People wanted to wanted to discuss this idea of starting up the militia. So I would mainly just go around and, and talk about what, how we should conduct ourselves and, and how to uh, survive any police encounters. Uh, I was back in Columbus, Ohio for about a week and my host was one of the uh, guys on the USS Pueblo, Lee Hayes. He'd been the, one of the radio operators on the, on the Pueblo and they'd been captured by the North Koreans for about a year, I think it was. Uh, I'm not sure, I can't remember how long they were held prisoner. It was a pretty long time. And uh, <clears throat> Lee, anyway, organized lots of meetings for me to talk to people in the Columbus area. And he told me that he was a building inspector. That was his his day job. But he hadn't he'd been out of it for about a year. But he had his his job was was waiting for him as soon as uh, I was going to leave. He was going to start it up again. So he went down to city hall the, the day I left town for Chicago. And. Uh, they told him, uh, sorry, we, uh, we, we, we had to give your job to somebody else who was more qualified. He said, more qualified, but I'm, that, that's what I do. I mean, I'm, I'm a building inspector. How can anybody be more qualified? Well, I'm sorry. It just, you know, that's the way it goes. As he was leaving the building, a guy came up to him and said, hey, Lee, um, the reason you didn't get the job is because the Secret Service was here and they're investigating you for terrorism. So... Uh, you know, now we know that everybody is going to be put in this terroristic uh, category to justify our, our, our arrest and detention, disappearance, whatever. So uh, we just have to be on our guard and ready to fight at the drop of a hat. That's my that's a, uh, advice at all, at all times is you have to be ready to fight. And, we can talk about Brandon Robb, that's kind of the most uh, outstanding example of what we're talking about. If you're, if you're familiar with the Brandon Robb story. Yeah, he uh, just tweeted something. He said something probably uh, less offensive than you or I say on a daily basis, and they picked him up. Yeah, he, he was just <clears throat> playing around with his brother and his sister on Facebook. Uh, it was a private a private uh, thing on Facebook. It wasn't open to the public. Uh, and, you know, he, Brandon Robb is an ex-Marine. He did a tour in Afghanistan and a tour in Iraq. I think he's 26 years old. <clears throat> he's, I, I think he's, you know, quite a naive young guy. Uh, but he was at home barbecuing uh, with the family. <clears throat> Just wearing a pair of shorts and no shoes and no shirt. And here came a whole convoy of vehicles up this driveway. And they turned out to be Secret Service and uh, FBI, I think marshals, and the local cops. They knocked on his door and they came to the door and they said, the FBI guy said, uh, hey, Brandon, we're really worried about you. You know, we, we've seen what you put on Facebook. <laughs> Now, how do you, you know, how does he see what you put on Facebook if it's, if it's private, but I don't know anything about Facebook. Nevertheless, uh, he kind of naively attempted to, to discuss this with them as if he could, you know, persuade them. Uh, I think it's some of the things that were on there were some rock and roll lyrics and uh, the idea that they kind of suspected the government was not telling the truth about 9-11. And... Uh, the, one of the cops knocked him down eventually after about a minute of his discussion. Knocked him down, put the cuffs on him, and uh, stuffed him into a squad car. The FBI said to him, Brandon, you're not under arrest. We're just worried about you. And uh, off he went. 
They took him to the psych ward at the local Richmond, Virginia VA. He got a thirty. He got a about a fifteen minute evaluation, and, a, and then a, the order for a thirty day to, thirty day evaluation. Uh, <coughs> luckily, his mother got on Facebook and started raising hell, and some veterans got in the act. And they realized what had happened. They got in, in touch with the John Whitehead with the Rutherford Institute, the civil rights law firm in in Virginia. John Whitehead got involved immediately, and it took five days, though, <coughs> to get Brandon out. And he was he was taken to the VA at Roanoke, which is about four hours away from Richmond to the west, to keep to keep him away from the family and his attorneys. But uh, Whitehead was able to find a judge who gave a court order to release him. But <coughs> Um, and while, while Whitehead was doing this, you know, over these five days, a journalist uh, approached him and said, you know, I've been investigating this uh, here in Virginia, and I, I found that there's an average of 20,000 people a year are uh, arrested in, in Virginia and taken for psych evaluations. Some of them get out, and some of them do not. Some of them just disappear. Uh, this guy, Brandon Robb, your client, he's the 20th, the 20th person in Chesterfield County, and this was August 16th. Uh, he said, this, he's the 20th guy in Chesterfield County to have disappeared just in August, and you know, the month's half over. So, uh, luckily, <coughs> the court order got to the Roanoke VA but not, not before the psychiatrist came into his cell, pulled out a chair, sat down, said, Brandon, I'm going to brainwash you. And Brandon said, you what? So I'm going to medicate you forcibly. Uh, and I, I mentioned this at the meeting the other night, and I said, you know, this, this means a chemical lobotomy. Somebody got up eventually and object, objected to my, to my characterization as, as a chemical lobotomy. But what else can you say when a, when a psychiatrist, an MD supposedly, says the words brainwash and forcibly medicate in the same context? It only means a chemical lobotomy. So luckily the order got to the Roanoke VA before this could transpire. So to me, see, I think about this guy every day. Uh, I've seen, you can see him online. Uh, discussing this and telling everything that I've said, and John Whitehead as well. Uh, but to me, this is the most terrifying example of what they have in store for us if we're not willing to fight our way out of any, any encounter at any time, day or night, on the road, at home, at work. That's, this is what we're faced with now. You know, I have up on my website, I put this story about the West Point, you know, uh, uh, and, and by the way, this is also backed up, and this may be one of the reasons they tried to kill me or brainwash me. I had just come out with my true face of FEMA. I filmed the first Homeland Security meeting with uh, a FEMA official uh, lecturing law enforcement in Albuquerque in case of a single outbreak of smallpox in a major metropolitan area we'll need 400,000 well-armed, well-trained, organized, disciplined troops to control the American people because some of them just won't follow orders and he's asked are you talking about the National Guard he said no they're too expensive no we need a cheap source of well-armed, well-trained, organized, disciplined troops uh, he intended the, and tried to direct everybody to the State Defense Force, which is a, a militia-style organization in New Mexico. But I don't believe he's talking about that at all. I think he's talking about illegal aliens. I think he's talking about street gangs. I think he's talking about Chinese Rapid Strike Force people. What do you think? Well, and all of the above, I'm sure you're absolutely correct. Uh, I, you know, <laughs> I'm, I'm in, in the mode of uh, military and police, the militarized police, but I'm sure that uh, 
you're absolutely correct that they'll they'll recruit from from the street. Well, in a response to overseas. in a response to you starting the militias and I started the militias in New Mexico. I did mine in the governor's office, and uh, so we weren't exactly a terrorist group. When FBI enlisted me and guide the right-wing extremists, the governor, Gary Johnson, recalled that. But after that came out, and after I put Building Number 7 on the cover of my nationally distributed magazine, I had a suspicious accident. Uh, somebody, it seemed like somebody knew exactly where I would be and arranged an accident. And they tried to, they did forcibly medicate me for three months. I've got absolutely no member of, of three months in a hospital. And after I recovered and realized I had, they had been keeping me drugged for three months with Halcyon, Haldol, Valium, and Morphine for, for three broken ribs, I decided that I might be under attack, and that was confirmed when two guys in blue pinstripe suits showed up and said, Hi, Clay, have you been hallucinating? You can thank us for that. We're CIA. And after I ran them off and thanked them for the hive, I told them it wasn't nearly as good as that acid they brought in in the 60s, and asked them what they were doing in this country and uh, fucking with me, and uh, they disappeared, but the next day, some little five-foot woman showed up with a ten-foot needle, it looked like, and said, Oh, hi, Mr. Douglas, I've got to give you this injection. I refused to take that injection. She said, You have to. I'm going to go get security, and they're going to hold you down, and I'm going to give this to you. Now, they didn't succeed in doing that. I convinced them that uh, they might not want to try that. And I call it the best bluff I've ever pulled. But uh, I believe they were trying to kill me. My wife thought they were, they'd were they saved my life. But I found that this is almost typical. Matter of fact, I'll have somebody on uh, my show this week whose son has been taken. I've rescued him once, and he's back into a hospital. One of the first children shot at Columbine. And they're drugging him. And they got the parents and his father, who never had anything to do with him, in on the thing. I mean, this drugging and this whole idea of a psychiatrist, like what happened to Brandon Robb, isn't that what the Soviets did? If you wanted to resist the communists in the Soviet Union, you had to be insane. And so they had a psychiatrist put you in uh, some kind of mental institution. Isn't that what they did? Isn't that what they're doing to us right now? Yeah, it's identical. It's based on the Soviet psycho prison principle, that's for sure. That's exactly what we're up against. We're, we're, I mean, Obama, Obama came out and told us right up front that basically he is a Soviet change agent. Yeah. You like the change? You like the change, folks? You're getting more and more of a police state. And this ain't Democrat or Republican. George Bush did the same thing. Gita, his father did the same thing. Bill Clinton in between them who worked for George Bush in the drug smuggling ring. They did the same thing. So it don't matter whether we got a Republican or Democrat in the office. Either they're two wings of the same bird. And now West Point is coming out and saying, if you're resisting, if you're anti-New World Order, you must be a terrorist. You must be Al Qaeda. You must be oh, you're part of the militia. You're probably one of those Christian identity guys, aren't you? They demonized us too. That's what my book, Mystery Babylon, outlines. Why they tried to demonize Christian identity, along with the militias. <laughs> well, Clay, if uh, you don't mind, I can give you part of this address I gave you tonight. Absolutely, sir. Go right ahead. Floor is yours. Okay. Who is it besides the rabid dogs in the Obama administration that wants us disarmed? Well, the United Nations wants us disarmed. Communist China wants us disarmed. The Israel lobby wants us disarmed. And of course, the Mexican drug cartel wants us disarmed. <coughs> These are the international gangsters. They have demanded that the Obama gangsters disarm us. It's quite possible that a belligerent meeting such as this is what the Obama gangsters want quite possible that we are being pushed and goaded into violent responses to their violent provocations, such as the sadistic police behavior we've seen all over the country. So what? <clears throat> they mean to enslave all of us and kill some of us. We're going to have to fight back sooner or later, regardless of whom it pleases or displeases. 
either fight or start waving the white flag, and I doubt that anyone in here is ever going to wave the white flag. Nope, we'll fight it out and see who wins, and I'm pretty sure it's going to be us. Now, there's no doubt that many police departments are encouraged to brutalize us civilians. There's also no denying that many police departments have been trained in Israel or are being trained by visiting Israeli instructors in this country. Anyone can see where this is leading. It is leading to a totalitarian dictatorship. But only the dictatorship can get us to hand over our guns. <laughs> so it doesn't matter what the Obama gangsters think they want. What matters is what we want. What matters is what we are going to do about it. We pay the bills and we'll make the decisions. Anyone who's hoping there's a safe, legal, and peaceful way to hold on to his guns is going to be disappointed. No control is about who is going to run this country, us or the foreign gangsters. We're not sure, of course, but it's possible that Obama himself is a foreign gangster. We're still waiting on the ID. If it's going to be us, then we need to be ready at the drop of a hat to fight like wildcats. The threat we face ranges from a militarized police takeover of the Sheriff's Department to the Blackwater-type mercenaries we saw during Katrina, right up to full martial law run by the U.S. Army and or the United Nations. All of these would be run by the CIA front groups such as FEMA <coughs> and Homeland Security. We've already seen the Army field manuals on occupation and concentration camps for American dissidents. As we've seen from the Vietnam, the Iraq, and Afghanistan disasters, some places cannot be successfully occupied by the U.S. or U.N. military, no matter how hard they try. Some can, such as Japan, South Korea, and West Germany, but some cannot. <clears throat> All thugs and bullies can be beaten because they're mainly into it for the money and the other bennies. It just takes guns and the guts to use them as they were meant to be used. We just need to get it into our heads that Teton County is one county in Idaho that will not be messed with or intimidated no matter what. As we see every day, over and over, the gangsters deal in horrific and merciless brutality, mainly overseas, but increasingly here at home. It's called state terror. Neither the Democrats nor the Republicans object to state terror, whether it's mass murder by bombers or assassination by drones bombing weddings and funerals, or sadistic grunts, kidnapping, torturing, raping, and murdering anyone who might resent American brutality. The list of American terrorists around the world is too long for this meeting. Many of us have suspected that our military men and women <coughs> have been trained in Iraq and Afghanistan to brutalize civilians over there as a prelude to do the same to civilians over here. This, quest, this suspicion began with the infamous 45 questions for soldiers and Marines in 1994. 29 palms. 29 palms, right? Yes, yeah, right. Okay. That was uh, developed at the Naval Postgraduate School in Monterey, uh, that questionnaire. <coughs> and again, just last week, with the report that Obama's litmus test for generals keeping their jobs is their willingness to kill American resistors. <coughs> the authors of American State Terror the politicians, and the killers are the same gangsters who want us to hand over our guns to them. The government knows that America is in an explosive condition, thanks entirely to what the government has been doing to us, especially with 9-11 and its planned tyrannical aftermath known as the War on Terror. It has been waging the War on Terror against foreigners <coughs> in our name, the government has always planned to attack us Americans, and now it's doing so. The War on Terror included the Patriot Act and the Military Commissions Act and the annual uh, National Defense Authorization Act. The Patriot Act obliterated the Bill of Rights. The Fourth Amendment is no more. The Gang of Nine and the Supreme Court has found no constitutional problem with the Patriot Act <clears throat> or with any tyrannical action of the Bush and Obama gangsters. We are not going to be protected by anyone in any part of the federal, state, or local government. It is up to us to protect ourselves from the tyrants. It has always been up to us, but human nature being what it is, we have trusted our employees to take care of us. This was very bad judgment on our part. It was lazy, 
it was cowardly and it was wrong. It is reasonable to expect them to join with us against the federal tyrants, but this is our responsibility. After all, we pay the bills. It is estimated by the government that there are between 300 and 400 million firearms in America today. There are more guns in America than there are cars, and guns don't tend to wear out. <clears throat> the only thing that stands in the way of a declaration of a totalitarian dictatorship by the Obama administration is this massive number of guns in our hands. And there is this, the, the historical fact that America came into being as a result of the violent overthrow of a totalitarian dictatorship. It was not done by Americans fighting a foreign enemy. It was done by Englishmen fighting their own English government. When the fighting was over, the English rebels had become Americans. The government knows that it cannot disarm us physically. It's an impossibility. The next best thing is to disarm us mentally, psychologically. As the current Attorney General Holder admitted years ago in a different administration, he said, we, we need to be brainwashed, his word, to give up our guns. I started the militia movement 30 years ago this year <coughs> to counter the attempt by government to brainwash us to give up our guns. I think the movement was successful at least to that extent. The militia movement was the biggest, fastest growing voluntary armed movement in American history. It came out of nowhere and at a time much less dangerous than today. It collapsed from the shocking federal massacre at Oklahoma City in 1995. <clears throat> 18 years later, we are mentally much tougher and more sophisticated than we were then. Federal atrocities still shock us, but they no longer make us doubt ourselves or the correctness of our duty. Thanks to the miracle of the internet and thanks to the power-mad overreach of the federal gangsters, millions of heavily armed Americans understand what we are about to experience, which is the naked violent struggle between tyrants and the normal people who really want to be left alone. The tyrants cannot leave us alone. They must control us without limit. Violence is the American way. It is our history and it is our way. The American tendency to violence has been exploited by the government in its genocide wars against foreigners. The NDAA for last year authorized the arrest and disappearance of Americans in secret with no due process. The NDAA allows federal agents and the military to kidnap, torture, and murder Americans who are considered enemies of the state. Senator Carl Levin revealed last year that these tyrannical licenses to kidnap, torture, and murder us were placed in the NDAA on Obama's insistence. So now we are confronted with another attempt to outlaw assault rifles, quote unquote. <clears throat> Everyone in this room knows what an assault rifle really is. A machine rifle that goes fully automatic and fires an intermediate cartridge. Intermediate means that the brass is shorter and holds less gunpowder and creates a slower bullet velocity than a regular rifle cartridge. Um, examples are the AK-47, the M-16, and even the old American M-2 carbine. Assault rifle <clears throat> is now a politically motivated term of hatred an attempt to make the gun owner appear aggressive and homicidal just by owning one. The term comes from the German original Sturmgewehr, or Storm Rifle, a word coined by Adolf Hitler to describe the first one, the STG-44. I kind of like the word, so I'll use it tonight. Remember, a Storm Rifle is really not a Storm Rifle unless it can be fired full auto. We'll just pretend for now that we're talking about Storm Rifles and not their semi-automatic cousins that are legal to buy unless you live in Connecticut, which brings up an interesting question to some other time. <clears throat> we know that the feds aren't against storm rifles for everyone, just us. The president and the other politicians are surrounded by storm rifles and submachine guns 